Welcome to the History Hyenas podcast. We just had Giannis. I don't know where the hell he went. Um, but I just want to start this podcast off by saying, first of I all, just every- to, I just had to take my temperature real quick because I'm checking every 15 minutes if I got the crown. If you got the crown. Okay, great. Yeah, I've been doing forceful expulsions of air and sending them to all my doctor's friends because it's a little gargle at the end of my exhale. So I've just been sending it to my doctor friends. Because I have a G.I. Joe figure completely submerged in my asshole. I don't know scientifically if it works, but it, I, I, I'm a, I treat the symptoms and I got no symptoms, so I'm sticking with it. I got one message to the coronavirus. You're not going to get through this T-shirt. Yes! No way you've you been through that. Because the American flag, the Star Spangled Banner, or the rainbow flag is, is Corona Antidote. It's what it is. Now, listen, let me ask you, let me, I, I was saying, uh, when you take your temperature, what I'm most excited about, what I'm really most excited and mostly thankful about is our sponsors. The, wow. Yeah. Is the what guy, is wow. I'm talking about Sandra is easy. The great work that he does. I'm um, a gastroenterologist. He has a podcast about sneakers, comedy, and medicine, which I think in times like this is what the people really want is for a guy to show all his different talents and not just focus on gastroenterology. I want to see what else can you do. And I think this guy's doing it. You can find him on Instagram and YouTube at Dr. Souls 11. Also, Dr. Harvey Spencer Jr., a happy, healthy smile. I mean, in times like, and he also DJs, in times like this, you want a guy cracking open and cleaning your teeth and also showing their other other, uh, talents they have, like DJing. Um, And you can follow him on Instagram at healthy smile rock hill and go to a healthy smile i'm sorry it's instagram healthy smile rock hill and the website is a healthy happy smile.com also during this time nutrition is key they say you got to eat to survive and you got to eat to kill the coronavirus so who better do that than matt coke um <laughs> nutrition made fun i just want to say thank you so much you help build the sustainable fundamental meals also, it's a time for anxiety, it, time, you know, anxious, you can sit there, do I have it, do I not have it? No better way to calm your anxiety than CBD script. So follow them on Instagram <laughs> at CBD script, that's C-B-D-S-C-R-I-P. Um, that's great. And you could go to CBD script.com, that's C-B-D-S-C-R-I-P.com and use the promo code Hyena, H-Y-E-N-A, S-1-5. So Hyena's 15, H Y E. NAS15, Hyenas15. Of course, no, no better time than for comedy right now. Go follow James Altucher at James Altucher. Go to his comedy class <laughs> in New York. And also, if you want to just have a little fun, you know, that you're trying to mix up, you know, breakfast foods and whatever with your kids, you're trying to come up with all these new ideas. No better way to spice up an oatmeal or yogurt than Lakeside Maple, which is a trail mix, not like any other trail mix. It's incredible just as a snack by itself and a great addition to your yogurt in the morning or after moving a few vegetables. Go to lakesidemaple.com and use promo code WILD, W-I-L-D, to get 15% off your order. Um, so I just want to say thank you to those guys and also to you feta cheese for just being a stand-up guy and getting his feta cheese, which is not from a, a sheep, it's from a cow, and he's got all his stores, and you can go find him on Amazon. Um, actually, not right now on Amazon. They're only doing essential products, but I think Theo's Feta Cheese is so good. It should be essential. Theosfeta.com, T-H-E-O-S-F-E-T-A.com, Theosfeta.com. We really appreciate it, and we also appreciate you getting uh, us your checks on time, so thank you very much. Yeah, wow, Chrissy, you, you're so enthusiastic about, especially our inaugural sponsors who are still around. What's up? Why is that? Yeah, what's up? I just want to say hi to everyone. And also just because I'm in the mood because I just love sponsors so much. And it's something we do here on the History News. I just want to give a shout out uh, to uh, uh, livefromthesandbox.com. To that kid, <laughs> Putin, whatever the fuck his name was. But I want to give him a shout out. I don't know if he's in quarantine right now. Vidal Sassoon, uh, livefromthesandbox.com. I just want to say shout out. 
to anyone who's been a sponsor, 9th Street Auto Collision, shout out, even though I know you, I know you had to downgrade, but I still just want to give you a shout out. So anybody, you know, who just wants to hear their name on the podcast, I'll do it for 500. Yeah, what we're basically saying is when times were good, we're sorry for taking you for granted because we need you now. Yeah, I need you now more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much we appreciate it i can't believe you guys are still around we appreciate it so much we do this podcast for you um we're going strictly digital i mean i don't even know if we're ever going to be outside of the house again chrissy i mean well yeah a pandemic. I, know, I know it's a pandemic and i don't know if you've noticed because the last few episodes i've been doing from uh behind enemy lines but now if you can see i'm in a new location i've been thrown out so <laughs> welcome back <laughs> Now, picked out. We've been. You know what? I, so I, what I, can you do? It's what happens when your text messages are linked to your MacBook that your child's using to do her homework. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back. I got a handle. I got it from a man who's straight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know what what's. Uh, you do? I don't know what causes more chaos. The modern global pandemic of coronavirus or Chrissy chaos. Chrissy chaos, baby. It's what it is. Packed my bags up, got here this morning. And it's nice to just have a little change of scenery. It's nice to say hello to the roaches in my apartment. What can you do, you know? I, I think I got a new nickname for you. You know what it is? What? Chrissy ping pongs. Chrissy ping pongs. Yeah, you want to know why? Why, because I'm a ping pong yeah, no, because you're constantly ping-ponging between this life and back with your baby's mama. It's what it is. It's been fun, but make no mistake, it has come to an end. <laughs> so what happened? You, uh, yeah, some, some text came through on the, uh, when you're helping your daughter with, uh, with their homework. Yeah, what can you do, you know? But now we're back, and it's fun. And, you know, Talking listen. Modern technology is as much of a burden as it is a help sometimes, no? Yeah, yeah. It's like Jesus Christ, you know? But what can you do? Listen. We're gonna be all right, okay? Things are fine. Um, I'm trying to find out what fucking godforsaken toots were texting you during a goddamn pandemic. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, some of these toots, it's like they're still sending texts that I'm not responding to. There's one girl texted me two weeks ago. She goes, hey, she goes, can I come over? I was like, I have a cough. She said, I'll suck the cough out of you. I was like, Jesus Christ. I, I mean, mean, do you not get it? I mean, it's- Did people I make are, wrong now? People are really stupid. Um, one of the things that I hope happens because of this is all the charlatan charlatans that are that are preying on those stupid people that perpetuate stupid people, just just get 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 overwhelmed by the tidal wave of reality. Because like Ann Coulter just tweeted, you know, she's just a charlatan who capitalizes on. Yeah, what is she saying about all this? She just said you have a better chance of catching the flu if you're over 60 than you do corona and then she posted a chart which actually said the exact opposite so that's how stupid she is so yeah. then all these scientists were retweeting her going like your chart your chart actually says the opposite this is how stupid you are because it, you know in times like this people like that who have been making their living because for her it's all theater you know it's all theater she's just preying on the uh, on the ignorance of people and, and it's like those people need to just shut the fuck up now and let the doctors fucking handle what's going on. Cause this is fucking serious. In New York City, yesterday we had a 40% increase in 24 hours. You got a doc, you got a your your your, your kid's godfather's on the fucking front lines. He's got the crown. We all got the fucking crown. We all got the crown. The thing is though, what they're starting to think now is it's definitely gonna peak and we gotta but so many of us have probably already been exposed to it. We don't even realize it. Yeah. And we it's already ran through our system potentially yeah and so you're just home yeah you're just home now yeah so now i'm home so uh we'll see what happens here over the next few days but you know this is where it was nice broadcasting from the front lines i think i did it for my country i did it for for our patreon members but you know unfortunately you know when you're in front lines you have a very high chance of getting hit and i got hit so yeah yeah um i don't know if there's a lot back. First one ends, Marines, uh, you, you took a little artillery, you took a little artillery fire. Yeah, it's what it is, and I got hit. But listen, I did my, you know, I did the duty for my service, and it's what it is. Now, how have you been today? What's going on? Is your wife still making you sandwiches? Yeah, what, well, today I woke up and I decided that I, because we've just been eating like we're at an all-inclusive vacation. Right. I mean, it's just like frozen, throw up desk, 
frozen, uh, you know, popcorn shrimp, chicken fingers, chicken nuggets, bagels all day. We're just eating. So I woke up today and I said, you know what? Enough of this. I'm enough of this. The kid is going to do a little Pilates and the kid's going to do a little yogi. Yeah. So what I did is I put on my spandex and I went to the TV and I did a little Suzanne Summers fucking workout, Bubba. But did you I'm about, it? Yeah. I, Tybo's next. I'm yeah. getting to all those little home workouts I always wanted to get to. Yeah. He not, Joe yeah. said this is the time to be creative and do everything you ever wanted to. So I'm going to fucking learn Greek and I'm going to do fucking Tybo. It's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, Schultz said to get creative, so I'm going to get creative and steal his business model. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fucking... We're, I'm going to catch the fucking coronavirus, and then I'm going to walk around and, and try to give it back to animals because you know what? This is an attack on our country, and I'm, fucking, I'm hiding in the woods. Come get me. Can Paulie smell or taste today or still no? Paul cannot smell or taste. Uh, he's got the he's crown. panicking a little bit? He's a little nervous, yeah. He's a little nervous. Um, it would be nice if we could call him up. Guys, can we try to call Paulie on here or what? Or should we do that as a Patreon guest? Bonus. I mean, we can invite him. Can we try to invite him? Uh, yeah, just text me his email. All right, we'll maybe do that later in the episode. But make no mistake, History Hyena, we are pioneers of the fucking quarantine Skype podcast. And we are back to normal. We are back to business. As you can tell, Chrissy's back in his apartment. His little, everything's back to normal. It's so, what it is. This episode today, we can't, we're only talking about it because it's absolutely the elephant in the room before we start moving on to other topics, because we got to get back to normal, because you know what, otherwise the terrorists win. And yeah. the terrorist is that little fucking squeak Asian virus that's trying to get to us. Yeah, well, you know what's a cute little thing, because today's episode's going to be about the Spanish flu, um, it's the, uh, of 1918, and I didn't know that the, that actually the Spanish flu was H1N1. And H1N1's been out there for some time. Did you know that the Spanish flu was H1N1? Because I'm not a fucking doctor like you. I, yeah. I, me, and Aunt, me, not, me and Aunt Eileen look at you when you talk like that, and we're just fucking stunned at how big your brain is. Explain it to me. All right, so it's H1N1. So what the cute news about that is, or what the weird news is, is in like 50 years from now, COVID-19 is going to come back out and it's going to be something like, oh yeah, like nobody even cares because we're all going to be immune to it. But it's So in other words, we're living through a time where like a pandemic is coming through that we, the ones who survive, will remain immune to and our children's children will be like, that's not even a thing. So it's kind of like we're living through the modern day bubonic plague. Wow. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> The 1918. How many people do you think the 1918 Spanish flu killed worldwide? Take a guess. I it didn't. It, didn't it got 600, 600 to 700 thousand Americans, and I think worldwide we're talking 50 million people. It got 50 mil, and it confirmed cases of 500 million, and it caught 50 mil when it was all said and done. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it only got 675 thousand of the boys with American passports. Right. So, look, my sympathies stop at the borders and laws of this great country. That's what it is. People keep saying people keep saying that this virus doesn't have any borders, and I firmly disagree. I mean, for, for me, because, I mean, just look at the number of Americans. I mean, look at where it's really hitting hard. It's, I know New York City. First of all, I think New York City, I don't even know if it's really the, the uh, I don't even know if, 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 if people are really even getting sick right now in New York City because of, uh, the coronavirus, I think it's because spring training's been delayed and we can't see our new New York Yankees. I mean, opening day's been delayed, and all of a sudden, as soon as they announce opening day in the New York Yankees season has been delayed, all of a sudden everyone's getting sick, and you're going to tell me it's coronavirus? I don't think so. I think Paulie V can't, can't smell or taste because he's not going to be able to see Aaron Judge in pinstripes on when he's supposed to come first week of April. Absolutely. Not having baseball uh, come at the time it's supposed to come is definitely going to lower your immune system 100% and leave you vulnerable for a squeak fucking Asian virus to try to get in there and ruin your ruin your life. Yeah, because, I mean, make no mistake, the coronavirus is the definition of a squeak. I mean, you can only see it under a microscope. I mean, that thing's a fucking squeak. It's a fucking squeak. Yeah. It's just it's a, a little, sneaky little fucking it, it squeak. It's just a squeak. What can you do? It's, um, just about, it's, it's, it's actually as big of a squeak as you can get a virus. Yeah. And... Philadelphia caught it bad because we didn't. Philadelphia, they keep bringing up Philadelphia versus St. Louis, and Philadelphia didn't. Has always been fucking stupid. Yeah, Philadelphia, they just, yeah, they were like, they instead of 
sheltering in, they had a parade. And they were like, listen, if you get the Spanish flu, all you got to do is drink some water. If you have a glass of water, that washes down the Spanish flu. If you just have a water and eat a higgy, and then you give him, you'll be fine. And then they died. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's such a typical Philly thing to be like, we're going outside. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get a glass of water. And uh, we're going we're gonna to continue this parade no matter what's coming. Because the, the, what, what really causes it is being inside. So let's go outside and be with other people. Because we're in South Jersey. And we're fucking stupid. We're stupid kids. Yeah, and um, and now more. What is that? So Philly, Philly lost like fourteen thousand to the Spanish flu. No, they got hit. The kids got hit. The the Philly Philly got hit. St. Louis. So it's interesting. So what happens is is what? Wow! Look at the crowns on. Oh, he's connected to the audio. Let's get the. Oh. Crown. You can't see him. No. Paulie V is about to connect to audio. There he is. Paulie, can you hear us? I can't. I can't hear. He's not on. I see him. Here we go. Real quick, before Paulie comes on, I just want to say, so what happened in the 1918 uh, Spanish flu, Philadelphia, they had parades and didn't shelter in or do any of the things that we're doing, and the spike went way up. It went way up and killed a lot of people, but then it kind of disappeared, where St. Louis flattened the curve and had the disease for longer with less death. So that's what this whole thing is about is that's what they keep saying with the medical system is you don't want to get a hundred thousand people that are going to get it at once because you could have saved them. But the, the byproduct of that is the disease will be around longer, but that's ultimately better. Yeah. Um, this can is how bad. Me now? You guys can hear me? Yo, what up? Got, yo, what up? What's up, man? You could hear me good or no? Uh, yeah, hear yeah. 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 How you so feeling, how, how you good. feeling? I'm good. You know, I'm tired. I'm tired. And, uh, you know, I can't smell anything, so. Can you taste? Like, nah, not really, no, it's real vague. So it's, it's uh, you know, no, but. No congestion though? None. Interesting. No congestion. Well, the good news about that is they say that people that, if that is coronavirus, people that get that part of it, it that's usually the worst it's gonna get and that goes away. Yeah, you're gonna make a full recovery. I'm hurt, we yeah, were I heard of it. We What'd you feel? Maybe your immune system's low because the Yankees got postponed. That could be. I mean, yeah. that could definitely that could definitely be. But I think, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> my immune system got a little, you know, heartbroken when Judge got hurt again. The kid can't stay on the field. But here's what I really think. They're saying that it. A lot of people I'm finding out are getting walking pneumonia now during this and not this. So, but either way, if you're not smelling or tasting, you have some sort of virus. So, right. But, no fever, um, you know, no fever, just a little bit of coughing here and there. But now I'm on, I've been having like symptoms of a cold now for going on eight, nine days. So I'm hopefully, you know, I mean, I'm not leaving the house. I'm hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me, six or seven, six or seven days away from this. Hopefully. I mean, what who knows? Wife and kids, they're good, perfectly healthy. Wife and kids are perfectly healthy. My wife is no, you know, no symptoms. And I was really no symptoms until the no smelling and, and tasting thing. And, and that's came out actually, of nowhere. What's that? It came out of nowhere, the no smelling and no tasting. No, he had, yeah, so what, what, he what had, happened? Uh, he had symptoms before, he had a cough and everything like that right yeah, before. Yeah, so, so what was happening was I, was I had a cough. I had a cough and I, I would like, one day I had the aches and I'd have the chills. And then um, it went away. And then for two days, I was back. Good, working in the yard, everything good. No fever, nothing. Then um, one night, me and Stace are eating, and I'm going like, does the wine taste funny to you? Or does the, you know, and we were eating pasta sauce that was spicy, and I was really not getting the taste of the sauce. I just felt the, the heat of the spice. Right. And then that's when I was like, something's off. And then Rudy Gobert, the uh, center of the Utah Jazz, is actually, actually the reason why I tested it because he's like, hey, you know, he's had it for days and he's like, I lost my sense of smell. Anybody else? So I started like, you know, shooting for breeze in my face and shit. Like I was smelling all kinds. I swear to God, dude, I took a, I, you know, I'm a hypochondriac too. I took funny, Febreze. funny Italian guy. Oh, I dude, I took Febreze and shot it up in my face. Nothing. Um, smelling whiskeys, nothing. Uh, spices, nothing. So I'm going, all right, that's something, but basically asystematic. Let me uh, ask you now. I know you can't taste food. I know you can't taste or smell food, but can you smell minorities coming onto your property still or no? I mean, that's a scent that'll never go. Yeah. 
It's just what it is. Yeah, well, you're going to make a full recovery. I mean, look, this virus can't hurt you. You're, you're an American kid. You're a, you're an Italian Greek kid. This virus is not going to get very far with you. Yeah, and you're a Yankees fan. It's not hurting Yankees fans. Yeah, you're going to survive. Oh, Mets fans. You know, but what's you, scary? are you the first comedian to admit that he's got the crown? I mean, I don't know if I have the crown. Yeah. I mean, if you I, can't smell and taste, I think you definitely got, you definitely got the crown. I, I can't. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't want to definitely say that I have it. Um, but the smelling and the thing is definitely something. And I'm hearing that more and more. So I don't know. I really, you know, I don't want to definitely say something and then find out I get my sense back tomorrow. And it was like, oh, you had a bad cold and an infection. But I definitely with everything that they're saying, here's the one saving grace silver lining is they're saying that the people, 30% of the people that can't smell or anything like that, that's really their only symptom. Right. So I'm hoping, I'm and hoping. You'll be that. immune to it then. Once it clears your body, you'll have immunities to do it. And your family. Yeah. Because um, the truth is, like, you don't, I painted my nails. The truth is, you don't <laughs> know. The truth is, even if the symptoms look like it, there's still so many diseases going around. Like uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Clancy, KFC from Barstool. I know you know, you know KFC, right, Paul? Yes. Yep. He, if you look on his thing, he had coughing, bronch, you know, coughing, wheezing. Yeah. Every symptom, every symptom, fever, fucking had went to China. All that shit gets a test, no corona. Just somebody up. else, yeah, and somebody else. I just recently saw somebody else posted. Wow, I got all these tests, and it came out that it was walking pneumonia, which does kind of the same thing to your nasal stuff. And I heard you can lose taste that way. So there's definitely a chance that I don't have it. But when I really lost all my sense of smell and taste, there was definitely a chance, especially with a slight cough and not feeling great last week, that. Again, like you said, though, there's a lot of viruses. There's walking pneumonia. Who knows? But I got to tell you, man, when you smell a, a, a whiskey that you know is potent and you can't smell it and you're not stuffed up, that was why I was like some Twilight Zone shit. It's, is it coming back at all? Or it's still 100 percent blocked. You know, it's only been like a little bit. So I'm going to find out like I was in the shower and I got excited because I was like, oh, is that soap? Do I smell the soap? And then I didn't. So so I don't know. But I'm going to give it a couple more days and, and see what's going on. Well, the good if, thing, if you have to do comedy tonight, you could do an hour set. You're not feeling sick at all. Just the smell is gone. If I had to do comedy tonight, I can definitely do a 15-minute set. But if I had to do an hour, I would probably be just because I'm cooped up a little tired. And I'll be honest with you, man, like stressed out, making my sure my kids. I got two little ones at home. So making sure that my kids are all right. Stacy's downstairs. She's ready to kill all three of us. So it's a shit storm over here. Yeah. yeah. Chris, what's it? Do, can, kids, can kids get it from an adult? So my thing is, I know we said we weren't going to talk about this, but we got we got Paulie the Crown on right now, so might as well quickly talk <laughs> about it. Um, I, <clears throat> my daughter's pediatrician told me, because my daughter has strep throat, she's doing a lot better, but she has strep throat. We had I had to take her to the doctor three days ago, like just I had no choice. I mean, this kid was coughing through the night, her fever was going up. I had no choice. We just had to go, and the doctor was like, you know, in a fucking hazmat suit, of course, and was like, look. She has strep throat, that's positive. He said, she was like, we're seeing people come in with strep throat that also have coronavirus. She said, your daughter could very well have it. She's got all the symptoms. She has wheezing, coughing, all the symptoms. She was like, but there's nothing we can really do. It, it's interesting. It, it's kind of wild to hear in 2020 United States, hear, hear a doctor say, hey, there's nothing we can really do except give her over the counter stuff and just keep an eye on her. It's a little bit like, what? And they said, and the doctor's like, we don't have enough tests to even test her. So just bring her home. And she's feeling so much better. And now, you know, her godfather's an ER doctor who also has uh, it. And he was saying, dude, she's fine. Just, you know, keep her home. Yeah. I mean, I think the amount of people that have this, if people really knew the amount of people that have, it would be staggering how many people actually have. Probably in the millions. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and, and there's a lot of people, I would say, I would say there's a lot of people from mid-January who had it in January till now. I mean, I was telling Giannis, the, the front page when Kobe Bryant got killed in the helicopter rest is sold. The front page of that, there was an article about the coronavirus there. And that was January 26th. So right. now you're talking almost 30 days ago. So there are people that have said they were sick, coughing, and then they had things that they didn't normally know they had. And then it came, it, you know, they shook it in two, three weeks. So who knows, man? Like, who knows how long this is out there? But I'll tell you what, it is a plan to take us out. Yeah. This is the plan, a hundred percent plan. Hundred percent. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you guys think that uh, muzzy women 
uh, are looking like geniuses right now because they've been wearing masks for years with the hijabi, and so they can't catch it. Good point. You think this was a plot between the Eastern Hemis and the, and the hijabis? Because like they know that they, they're like, hey, let the let it go, get America, get Europe, and we'll be covered up because we got full hijabs on. Ah, uh, you yeah. know, could be. I think so. I think I think it's um. I think, yeah, you can't, you know what is interesting about the, about the disease is for me, when this thing is over, anybody that hurts anybody or, or, or thinks that their religion is superior to somebody else's now is so fucking stupid because as you can see, it's not. I mean, the disease is not picking and choosing what fucking hat your priests wear. They're just getting everybody. So it's a little bit like, if this doesn't prove it, what do you want to, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if, look, this is a good time to get a hijabi. And if we run out of masks, you know, I, I don't know why they haven't, nobody on the TV has said, you know, it's a good idea to just put a full hijab on because yeah. you've got a hijab on, it's covering your face. Exactly. Now, Paul, real quick, I want to know, is the 4th of July party canceled or are we still on schedule as of now? No, as of right now, we're a go. Bigger and better than ever. Big, big fireworks. I'm blowing up the sky again. Big fireworks. Huge. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Paul. You feel Paul. better, man. We appreciate you stopping and checking. I'll give in. you guys an update if I, if I get anything in, uh, definitive. I really don't know, but I will always keep you guys updated. Thanks for your concern. Thanks, Thanks brother. brother. All right. All right. See, you in a few. see you in a few weeks. Yeah, in a few weeks. <laughs> in a few weeks. There's yeah, I'm saying that to all my friends. I love you how guys. How do I get out of here? How oh, Paul, you're still on. Yeah. I mean, how do I get out of this thing? I think you just got to hang up. I think you just got to hang it up. We should Hang do a up. thing, Ginzo's trying to learn technology f during the pandemic. Yeah, we got to get him off here because I don't want to fucking catch the crown from him. I don't want to catch it. It would be funny if, like, he thought he was off and he just yelled something at his wife that he shouldn't have said, and then yeah, we all heard. Look, I love you. You're one of my closest friends, but I don't want to fucking see you for a couple weeks. It's what it is. Yeah, because it's funny because the truth is, because the way you're laying right now on your stomach is I, I'm just getting this urge to crawl under your bed and come out the other side and start tickling your feet a little bit with my nails. <laughs> now so, look, Rizzy looks like a human testicle. It's what it is. It's what it is. When I now and I when I Skype when I do Skype and podcasts, I lay like a teenage girl on the telephone, and it's just what it is. It's just what it is. Yeah, I'm face first on the bed, and here we go, Corona. It's yes. What it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if Verzi was still on the phone, he wouldn't even smell it, so it's no big deal. It's what it is. Cause do you think this is a good time for people to start eating pussy because there's no fumare if you got the corona? I think 100%, especially for him. I mean, he's got no fumes. Yeah, I mean, look, if you were a girl or a boy, it's time to go down on your husband and your wife if you got the crown, cause it don't matter. You're gonna, you, you, you can't smell fumes. Everything's got no fumare. No fumare. Now let me ask you a question. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you this, because since you've been home, what what have everyone's talking about this Tiger documentary? Have you watched the Tiger Tiger King? I have been balls deep in Mad Men. Yeah, I am. I am watching Mad Men and getting fat, and that's why today I was like, no, and I went and I hiked six miles with my dog, walking around. Did you I get lost? Into, I went into the woods. I'm trying to hide from the crown. Cause so I to ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How do I? How does my hair look? And uh, do you like this new long look? Look, you're you're a cute, 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 fucking cat. Yeah. I mean, you're a coyote with a fucking beauty. Yeah. You're a cutie who's a lot. What do you think of that? No, that's not what we wanted to do. What do you think of that? What? <laughs> That's a little improvement too. Venetia <laughs> is gonna. Venetia, I mean, what are you doing? I mean, Venetia is gonna quit. You, you, Venetia is not here. Think of that. There's been some changes. That's the only way I got kicked out. She found Captain Wenke. <laughs> <laughs> you went and got the mandatory sex change operation. What it is, cause they said that you have to do it before. Because it considered elective, so I said, "Fuck that! I'm getting a pussy." And cause make no mistake, now the statistics have changed because I got less chance of dying from the crowd because I am fully a woman. You can't take it away from me. Yeah, yes. For all our trans fans who have gone male to female, congratulations, S. Loke Yas. You got half of the chance to get the crown. Good for you. Good for you. Can I come over tonight? 
yeah, you can come over whenever you want if you want to sleep outside because you're not coming in my house. I'll fucking, you come up to my door. I'm opening the door with a shotgun. It's what it is, cuz. Now, listen, what else do you know about the, about the Spanish flu? Do you want well, me to read the Spanish, facts? The, the Spanish flu, so if you don't know what the Spanish flu is, Spanish flu is 1918, basically the bubonic plague and then the Spanish flu. The bubonic plague was like, I mean, that was like the first iPhone. And then the fucking Spanish flu was like the iPhone. Well, another, it's another nickname I have for my baby's mama. Yeah. And then the Spanish flu was it like to kill you. The, the iPhone 10. It was the real fucking deal. And the reason why they call it the Spanish flu is not because it originated in Spain. All right. They called it the Spanish flu because Spain was the only country that was openly reporting on the pandemic. Every other country, including the United States, because of the Sedition Act at that time, it was World War I. They didn't want anything that sounded anti-American to go into the press. So they didn't want to feel vulnerable or sound vulnerable. So they suppressed all the information and they wouldn't report on it. But Spain was openly reporting on it. And hence, that's why they call it the Spanish flu. So we pulled a little bit. We pulled kind of a Chinese, Russian kind of communist move a little bit. We did. We, call, we pulled what you call a little dirtbag move. So really, it really should be called the American flu. I mean, as Sergio Chicon would say, we were moving around kind of dirtbag at that time. But where did it kill the most people, though? Do we know that? Do we have that? Benetti, do we have that answer? Where did it kill the most people? Woke Joe? Um, it doesn't say. It, it was really affected more in America and um, Europe and in uh, Asia. That was when it was uh, most it mostly impacted. Wow. And how about this? How about this, Benetti? You know what's very interesting, too? I see... Um, only 90 years, only in 2008, did researchers actually find out what it was. How fucking wild is that? Yeah, it was fucking wild. They didn't, they, at the time, they didn't even know really what a virus was. They didn't, people didn't know that it was, uh, it was contagious uh, because of um, saliva or, or germs. They didn't, they, the virologists weren't around yet. The, the, the main thinking of the day was that actually being outside was good for you. That fresh air was good for you. So, but, see, but that's interesting because in the bubonic plague in the 1500s and 1600s, they knew there were, they found orders to isolate. So they knew even back then, like, hey, don't come out of your house. <clears throat> well, they were still trying to isolate and stay away from each other, but they just thought fresh air was the thing. They thought dirty air was good. They didn't know how, vi they didn't know what viruses were and they didn't know how they were exactly transmitted. So it's very people, interesting, too. It's very interesting, too, because the viruses we've been talking about, viruses are selective. So the main difference between H1N1, the Spanish flu, and this is although people of any age can be, get really sick and die of what we're going through right now, the H1N1 flu was actually killing and targeting more young people than old people. Yeah, if you were in your 20s, you were susceptible. And the Spanish flu fucking was brutal. You would, uh, it, you would bleed out of your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. All your orifices you would bleed out of. And it would, uh, it would give you some sort of respiratory pneumonia where you couldn't breathe. Fucking your skin turned like purple and black. It was 100% a brute. Brute. More U.S. Soldier died, U.S. soldiers died from the 1918 Spanish flu than were killed in battle during World War I. How wild is that? It's wild. And that's why it's called the forgotten flu, because it was so overshadowed by World War I. And because the United States press didn't really report on it, it's called the forgotten pandemic or whatever. Because, yeah, it actually killed more people than the actual fucking World War I. Just like, just like in the Civil War, when you say, like, a lot of people, more people died of infection than they did from actual uh, combat, which is wild. At the end of the day, germs and viruses are squeaks that are fucking trying to kill us all. Yeah, because make no mistake, if you can kill more people than the Nazis, you got a pretty good product. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Napoleon was onto something. He was trying to take over the world as a squeak because at the end of the day, the squeaks are really in charge. Yeah. What kills more? You know what the number one biggest murderer of human beings is? It's not Ted Bundy. It's not, it's not Mariah Carey. It's fucking a squeak mosquito. Kills more humans than anything. The squeaks are in control. The squeaks, the squeaks move it back in. Yeah, it's what it is. You can live in my shoe. Yeah, I mean, here to put it in perspective, 50 million people in 1918 would be the equivalent, my peoples, of 450 million people today. 
That's how many people died from the Spanish flu. And also, hey, Bert's back in Vegas. I'm concerned about him. It's what it is. That's a lot of fucking people. I mean, when this thing is all said and done, I mean, you know, people are going to die. And I, I really believe almost all of us are going to get it. They do say, I will say, though, again, not that it matters, especially if you're sick, if you've already lost a loved one, you know, of course, condolences. But it's like the H1N1 flu is more deadly than this. Yes, um, it, it is more deadly. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we are so much more advanced now. We know how to quarantine. We know how people get the virus. We know how to isolate the genes. We know how it's transmitted. We have respirators. We have ICU. We're, we have anti-retroviral uh, drugs. We're so far advanced in the medical field, thanks to you know uh, the Western civilization, Western science. Thank you to reason and and and, and logic. And you know what? I, I hope after this that 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 people have a newfound respect. For scientists, nurses, those are the real fucking heroes. You fucking actors, fucking singing, we are the world. Your time is over. I hope celebrity dies. I hope the cult of personality is over after this. And I hope we start really understanding that nurses and doctors, like your boy Lukash, that's what a hero is. Because when you're a kid, yeah. when you're a kid, you remember you look at a fireman, you remember you look at a fireman, you look at even a fucking doorman. When you're a kid, you're like, I want to be a doorman. You, I want to be a fireman. Those are fucking, I want to be a cop. I want to be a fucking nurse or a doctor. You know, you, women should want to be nurses. So they, so they, so they have less opinions and, and they get the soft ready. Let's exactly. get society back. I want to go back to the fifties. Women should be allowed to vote. Yeah. And you only need an associate's degree. Listen, I, I think doctors and nurses and physicians assistants and anybody in the healthcare field, it's kind of like the way they're walking into this thing is like, in D-Day, when you see those soldiers getting off the boat and the fuck jumping into the water in the boat, that's exactly how they're walking into an invisible enemy. I mean, almost every doctor or nurse is going to come in contact with this, and a large percentage of them are going to get it. And it's one of those things where a doctor seeing 10 patients that have this is a lot different. They get a lot higher of a viral load than someone on the street, you know? So it's like, it's really, really, really dangerous. Yeah, I mean, they truly are heroes. And anyone who's been through anything <clears throat> in the healthcare system and has had to deal with nurses, uh, nurse practitioners, RNs, uh, physical therapists, all the people who, who rehabilitate and cure us uh, and, and provide that service for humanity, I mean, how can you not extol them and put them on the highest pedestal? Those are your heroes. I mean, those are your real fucking heroes. So that's what it is. There's no shame in having them as a guest on fucking Letterman or whatever. I'm dating, right. you know, whatever show's big now. I don't know who's watching TV, but fucking put, have one of those people on Colbert. I'd rather hear from them than I would from fucking, you know, from Julia Roberts. Why should Bubala. I want to care about what Julia Roberts says? But Boobala, listen to this. Here's another yeah, baby. Baby monkey. I think one of the byproducts of this is, you think TV could come back now because so many people are home again? It could. I, I don't know what, what, the other side of this is going to look like. I do know for sure that it's going to be a changed landscape. I don't know uh, what industries are going to be left standing because we were living in a time that was propped up by so much bullshit and, and bullshit that required momentum from comfort. Like, you know, so it was like we were all doing, there were so many people who were doing such, so many bullshit service jobs that required the momentum behind it, you know, of, of, of progressive uh, innovation to get to that point. And now that that rug has been swept out from under them, I don't see people going back to those bullshit jobs. Right. Because we're all dealing with our core necessities now. We're coming back going like, hey, I can't give you this percent. I, I don't need this. I need my core essentials here to build my business again. And then people are going to get used to that. So a lot of those bullshit professions are going to be pushed out. There's, so we're going to, we may fall into a depression where we're seeing like, you know, some people projecting 20, 30% unemployment. And a lot of that is going to be because going to be because people aren't going to be doing the things right away. It's not just going to be a clean cut. Like when you take a shit and it's a good day and you don't got to wipe, that's not going to happen. 
there's going to be there's going to be fumes from this. There's going to it's going to take a little while for people to want to go out to a theater again, want to go out to a comedy show again, to want to be around other people again, to want to fly again. So all these industries are going to continue to be slow for a while. And then, of course, people need to earn some money again to get that expendable income back and that security. So a lot of people are going to be fucked for a long time. Well, I'm hoping that the stimulus package that comes out will help everybody, but you never fucking know, you know? You never know. But, you know, that's why we're so thankful to our Patreon members, our producers, because you guys are you guys are the backbone. You're the reason why we're able to do this show in the uncensored way. I mean, Chris just love pushed you. This is entertainment in 2020. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys if you want to see the full La Puss because Mike's going to have to blur it out because we're also trying to get money on YouTube. We're screwed in. We got our yarmulkes on during the pandemic. Yeah, we are uh, because of this podcast and because of you, you know, we're hopefully going to remain a, is kind of employed. But make no mistake, for this time, this is really the only way we can earn a living during this time is is online doing our podcast, which is both of our favorite thing to do anyway. So again, I just want to thank you guys. I know a lot of you are fucking suffering. I know a lot of you don't know where your next uh, paycheck's coming from. And if you and if you have to cut your, you got to become a toot again. There's you know we're gonna have we're gonna still have free content for you. Uh, but if you if you can afford to remain a non toot, I just want to fucking salute you. I think I think you're doing a service to your country. To be honest with you. Yeah, because we're American patriots, and cuz make no mistake, we're coming. I mean, this is the podcast you want to be a part of and listen to because we're going to keep going. We're keep pushing out content. We're going to keep doing this, and this is only going to grow us. So you might as well, if you have the money, again, I agree with everything Yana said. If you need to go back to being a toot, go ahead. No harm, no foul. We totally understand. But if you have the money to be a non toot, you might as well stay because cuz after this thing is over, we're only going to climb, and the, pay the price is going up. <laughs> But make no mistake, right now, the prices are not going up. Yeah, make no mistake, right now, if you want to do yourself a favor, go check out Dr. Sandra Zizi. <laughs> but she's a loyal customer. Give us a hundred oh, month. Right now, we want to just give a shout out to Nutrition Made Fun, Matt Coke. I mean, the kid is screwed in. He's a nutritionist. Go get in shape with him because God knows that's an expense that you can't spare right now. Yeah, James Altucher, thank you. Thanks, Sinatra. You're welcome back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, also, I just want to give a shout out to our new listeners and the new schedule. I want to, we got a new kind of quarantine schedule Wednesdays and Thursdays, new episodes are going to drop and every Friday we're going to be on YouTube live. So just want to let every, all the babies know YouTube live, we're going to be doing a super chat every day, 12 noon Eastern, I'm sorry, 3 PM Eastern time, every Friday, YouTube live. Um, and also I want to give a shout out to um, Brian Stefanik, comedy at Comedy Photoshop. Follow him on Instagram for doing all his artwork. And Jeffrey Miles at Jeffrey Miles, J E F F R E Y M Y L E S, on all social medias and jeffreymiles.com for all his artwork. And of course, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, our cuz community. I mean, we really, not only, it's one of those times, let me tell, be honest with you. You guys now, you know, we're trying to do the best we can here to help you guys out and do what we do. What we feel like we've been born to do is, you know, do comedy and use our, because really what, you know, we're expressing our anxiety and our, you know, negative feelings through comedy. That's what we've done our whole lives. And what you guys are doing on the Patreon community board, saying some of the funniest things we've ever heard, thinking some of the funniest nicknames we've ever heard, it helps us too. I mean, it helps us so much. It's like, it can't be, I can't state it enough where it's like, I find joy going to the Patreon board to see you guys, uh, to see what you guys are up to because I'm just laughing hysterical and now I'll have a lot more time to do it because I am back home alone. Yeah, we are a community, guys. Make no mistake, you are a member of the major hyena. We are all fucking hyenas. We do what we got to do. And truth be told, whenever someone posts something funny on the Patreon community or whenever there's a funny Patreon name, Chris will text me, I'll text him, we'll call each other and we will absolutely laugh about it. Yeah, like, I just want to give a quick shout out. I'm sure we'll read him, but just one of the funniest names we've heard that made us laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. I want to give a shout out to Yanni Quarantini Tiny Peeny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we have, we have just as much fun with you guys as you seem to have with us. So just really want to give a shout out to you, man, and, and, and everyone who's been there since the beginning. We're going to get through this together. You're going to get through this. 
uh, stay inside 14 days, build an immunity, and then you become a superhero to this fucking thing after it's done, and this little squeak virus can't hurt you, and then you're back to eating peats and banging people out. But if you do lose your sense of smell and taste and you have the crown, and, and then you, you're with, living with someone who also has the crown, then you might as well just go down on each other every single night because you both got no fumes for, for a week or two. It's what it is. All right. It's what it is. Well, are we going to read the Patreon names next, Mike? Oh, we, let's do it. Yeah, sorry. Before right, we do, I just want to say one more uh, fact about I want to say one more fact about Corona that people may want to know. It started, uh, Corona started from birds. I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the Spanish flu started from birds and they think that it jumped from birds. All these pandemics have jumped from animals to humans. And the most recent one, Corona, they theorize, you know, we keep, uh, it's from the wet, wet markets in Wuhan and we, uh, and the swine flu in 2008. You know, uh, we keep encroaching more and more on into these habitats and we don't have the immunities that these animals have that carry these fucking viruses. But for some reason, uh, the flu comes from birds. And I don't know why, because I'm not a virologist. Yeah, I have no idea why. I have no idea why it comes from, uh, comes from, from birds. birds. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully after this is all done, I mean, the wet markets close for good, because if the government doesn't close them, the boys will, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's the what boys may have to go over there and say, listen, guys, unfortunately, you can't eat fucking bats and snakes and bear dick anymore. We're closing down. You can't down do it. Time. You can't fucking do it. All right, baby gorgeous. Can we read the Patreon names? Mikey, did Absolutely. you see them? Yeah, I, I, I emailed them to you. Okay, I'm looking for them. Oh, uh, Patreon right. names. Got it, got it, got it. We got a few, honey. Yeah, we're not going to do all of them right now. We're going to do a big chunk of them. Um, also, what do you want me to cover your lapus with on the on the YouTube? Uh, should we do what? What do you want to cover it with? You want to what? What's uh? What's a pussy on um? <laughs> want to cover it with a cat? A cat? A cat with the hard eyes? Uh, I'll I'll picture I'll cover it with gay anime. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. I'm going to stop. There's a line in here. I think a, a natural. Line. Did you put that line in, Mikey? Uh, no. It's just kind of a natural break because there's so many of them. All right, so I'm going to stop at that line. Okay, we have like 400 something total, so. Holy shit. Yeah, I think we'll just do this in, in daily chunks, so. Yeah, let's do them in chunks. All right, so what do you think's a good, what do you think, maybe I'll do 50? Uh, yeah. Yeah, do yeah. 50 and see okay. how we feel. All right, here we go. Here are the Patreon names. Welcome to the party. Thank you so much for going to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. We encourage you to make funny names up and we really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. First up, Max Long. Second, Jake, not a sauce monkey, Alari. Sucked my first pseudo penis, parentheses, not gay though. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we will give a pseudo penis of the week for the best name, it's PW. And if you don't want to uh, have that, well, the thing is now, if you don't want to make up a name, you're kind of just being an asshole because nobody has jobs. So we can understand before if you didn't want to have your name uh, be crazy because you don't want your boss to hear it. So you would say you just go straight to the back. You're here for the content, which is fine. But now it's like, make up a name because you're just working from home. Okay, Richard Furkovic, Brooke, Nick, not a FF, but my wife's getting suspicious. It's what it is. <laughs> Mark them down. Riley, big lips, bitch hips, and puffy nip Smith. Goody. Dalton, bean flicker, ween liquor, queen sticker, ending cop. Real good. Squeak looking to get cracked open for stage time in Boston. <laughs> Good. Rana, Travis O'Neill, Chrissy Chuletas, Daniel Sibbert, Coffee Leroy, but the last name is Walsh, genetics plus no pubes. <laughs> Adam P, 5'7 squeak, but will climb a tall piece like a ladder. <laughs> Make a note of him. Scotty, blue eyes, thunder thighs, Father Bill makes me cry. Make uh, Clyde Drexler. Anuj Ramesh, Mrs. Chrissy, boot scoot, trail mix in the poop shoot, Papas. Uh, put her on the list. Make no mistake, I canceled my flagrant two pledge for this. It's what it is. Yeah, well, he, he, you're a winner. We might just make you the winner on principle. Uh, Shelly, turn your belly and... Hold on. Shelly, turn your belly into a gluey, dewy koozie and blow a lakeside maple out your koozie, okay? Yeah, tr she tried to, you know, she tried to do a triple black clip. A, no, a they, for effort. There's nothing we could do. Yeah, A for effort. Timmy Tuck It Back Turner. Simple and nice. Rick, one bad chromosome away from being born a hobbit Lavange. <laughs> Good one. Clyde Drexler. 
Nick Powell, Courtney broke us a joke, but want to be a non toot Shaw. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Tim will eat a Pokeball out of a Twink's ass, Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Got me good. Put him on the list. Suffolk sock face sauce monkey. Good. Bert Gray. Grant Bobby Lee's 100% Franken Beans child molestation stone. Good one. Drexler. Josh Demos. Uh, Sticky Dick McGee. Asher, Chrissy's Aryan Fleshlight is not a character piece. Reese, <laughs> Lee Mitchell, Michael J. Tattoos, Brian, I'll give you honest something besides light to blow Babcock. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the list. He's on the list. Adam Lardo, Tyler Shaw, Dan, Juan, the six lucky lady, Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goodie. Cutie with a smoothie who needs a screwed in cutie. Nice. Nice, simple. I like it. Alex Talby, Scott Belmont, Pat Sullivan, Siziki Jew, the squeak of the week. <laughs> Put him on the list. Sauce Monkey, Honey here for the funny. Good. JT Cross, AD, CJ, Bertie Martin, Joseph Benedicto, Chrissy. Okay, maybe it did happen, but it was in six million. Okay. Uh, no, we're not going with that one. It's not, you know, what are you going to do? Just move oh, on. oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry about that. Uh, Chastity Ramsey, Peter Colleen, Todd Ekebus, Matthew Silva, director of Oscar winning hip hop, Caliph Eight Mile, a Zach story. <laughs> Goody. Mikey Gaggles O'Cackles, Logan O'Hara, Brick Flair, Ben, Carl, Upper West Side, dead inside, but not as dead as Zach. Eric Wendell, Leaky Droop, non tooth Slurp and Soup out of Chrissy's Poop Shoot. Real good. I mean, the poop shoots and the skin flutes, are, there's a lot of them. Want to sit on the mutual staircase with Yanni Gyro and Chrissy Kraut? Put her on the list! It's on the list. J.O., Nate Bug Chasing with Magic Johnson Baxter. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> no tooth Bitch Smith. Nice. Matt, Sack Tuck Back, feeling like an FF because now I'm plant-based Kolb. Vegetable Good. moving attic. Now I'm Frank and Beans. A plant Reese pulsed in my cheeks with his piece repeatedly. Okay. Some people are just <laughs> telling us what they went through. Uh, <laughs> Honor Dickinson, Father Bill's Caribbean relocation. Uh, Robert, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. That's originality points right there. Father Bill's Caribbean relocation. Let's put him on the list. Put him on the list. Robert, fuckboy Fritz. John, Alex, my yaya makes me too much kulukari, but I'm not too thick. Kuluraikya. Kuluraikya, but I'm not too thick, okay. We Matthew break Tavar you. Yeah, Matthew Tavares. Alex, plant-based Zionist, true blue, midtown Jew, sucking toes, Rose. Big time, big time, put him on the list. On the list. Kathy Strauss, Kristen with no fumes. Eddie, when I move the vegetables, it's to the right, Scortelli. <laughs> Put him on the list. Okay. Chris Perry, Max here for a good time, not a long time. It's just what it is. Abney, Frank, <laughs> Kia Strachan, Wani, throw me on my back and unzip my front antihistamines. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the list. Marilena, monkey sauce and garlic minced Italian non toot. Thank you. Good. Stevie, quick to crack open a two while wearing a Jeta jersey. Nice. <laughs> I like that for simplicity. Put them on the list. On the list. Logan Schneider, Elizabeth Noga, Anthony Slob, Chrissy's Knob, while Yanni stuffs me full of those. Oh, hold on. Anthony Slob, Chrissy's Knob, while Yanni stuffs me full of Theo's Feta Bongiorno. <laughs> Drexler with a good laugh. Scott, T F A T K. Oh, Scott, the fighter and the kid has been eaten by a hyena K. Nice. Shout out to the fighter and the kid. Christopher Pellegrino. Alan Xavier Silva, Tori with a real sauce monkey last name, but also a good job, so can put it on Patreon. <laughs> he went for it. It was a good try. Tony was conceived in Banco Popular Pacheco. Nick, Sean Benjamin, uh, and then last but not least, Chrissy Forthright reads the baby a story, A.K. Horton. Here's a Jew. <laughs> no good. Can't put him on the list. I'm put him on the list. Okay, uh, we, that's a damn good list. Uh, did anyone take note of that? Yeah, I did. Give me one second. All right, all right, Mikey. It's, it's good to hear your voice all the way from Amadillo, Texas, or wherever the fuck you live. 
Benetia, are you okay? Kuklamu. Yeah, I'm good. How was the episode? Did we miss anything on the Spanish flu? Because it, it, there's a lot of interesting, cool history hyena facts of the day we threw in there, no? Uh, yeah, I thought that the coolest part of about, I mean, this is obviously horrible. It's very similar to what's going on right now. But one of the interesting facts about this is how like people started to rely on science. I mean, people that back then were still pretty religious all across the world. And so they weren't really paying attention to science and like they gave it a chance and really trusted it. So that's how, you know, people, you know, started trusting the methods of doctors. Yeah, that's what, like I was saying, like things like this really shake the charlatans out of the mainstream. And because, you know, when it becomes a life and death situation, people get very self-interested. Right now, people, I mean, you know, they don't care about issues. They don't care about political opinions. They care about survival. They, they When things get real, you got to deal with things that are based in truth. And science is based in truth. So yeah. hopefully uh, from this, you know, there's a comeback. Uh, for science in the public eye, because truth has kind of been up for grabs. You know, there's people saying the earth is flat. There's people saying global global warming. The scientists are just shills for, for corporate interests. I mean- You're Not hearing any you know, of it. yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully research and the scientific method, uh, people have a little bit more respect for what these people fucking do, because they're doing a service for us. They're the ones who keep up, they're the propeller. The, they're the propeller. The wheels of history are greased with blood, but the propeller is the fucking doctors and scientists. Yeah, that's what it is. I got the crown. You ready? Yeah. Stevie, quick to crack open a toot while wearing a Jeter jersey. Wally, okay. show me on my back and unzip your front at the histamine fiend. Eddie, when I move the vegetables, it's to the right, Scortelli. Squirt, anytime anyone's got an Italian name, they got a, like an unfair disadvantage. It's an unfair advantage. <laughs> Alex, plant-based Zionist, true blue Midtown Jew, sucking toes, rose. Good one. Father Bill's Caribbean relocation. The originality, uh, that's maybe, okay. Want to sit on the mutual staircase with Yanni Gyro and Chrissy Kraut. Good one. Taziki Jew, the squeak of the week. Simple and good. Cutie with a smoothie who needs a screwed in cutie. Brian, I'll give Giannis something besides light to blow, Babcock. I mean, that, the originality on that one's tough to overlook, right? You That's my a, favorite one, honestly. And, and Babcock. Yeah. Yep. Who, uh, who else is on the list? Tim will eat a Pokeball out of a Twink's ass Dylan. I mean, I'm, I'm always good. Whenever Timmy Dylan in a Pokeball comes up, I, I'm a weak, I'm, I got a weakness for that. <laughs> Uh, make no mistake, I canceled my flagrant two pledge for this. It's what it is. I mean, that's another goodie. Yeah. Mrs. Chrissy, boot scoot trail mix in the poop tree papas. Adam P, five seven squeak, but will climb a tall piece like a ladder. And Nick, not an FF, but my wife's getting suspicious. It's what it is. I mean, not an FF, but my wife is getting suspicious. I think might be the funniest. I think the most creative is I'll give Yanni something else to blow about. So I for like me, it's something else to blow. What do you guys like? Something to blow. All right, that's the winner. That's the winner. Congratulations. Also, watch my special Blowing the Light on YouTube if you have it. You're quarantined. Watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Who, thank everyone who's like left comments on that. And everyone, when you're watching the live stream and stuff, when you, when you give the thumbs up, I really appreciate it. It really helps the numbers on that, um, their algorithm, all that bullshit. But thank you guys for uh, spreading the news about us to everybody. Thank you. Absolutely. Buddy. God bless you during this tough time, everybody. We Thank got you your back. Content is coming. Check everything. Be on the Patreon. More Patreon content coming. Uh, go watch Chrissy's 9-11 story. Share it with all your friends. Um, go go watch. Go follow Chrissy on Instagram. We got no dates coming up because we're living through the apocalypse, but we're going to survive. It's what it is. Yeah, our date's hopefully going to start again in the summer. Uh, we'll see. But for right now, this is where you catch us, historyhyenas.com. Oh, Go get, um, we got t-shirts. We got all our merch up, historyhyenas.com. Hit the merch button. We got all t-shirts, cuties and smoothies, baby gorgeous, everything you want up there. So go get it. Yeah, if you want to just get involved in the hashtag as well. What is it? Is it post your quarantine hair? People have been putting different hashtags. So it's quarantine hair or post your quarantine hair. You can post that up. Yeah. And you know what would be real cute is if you guys went and bought a shirt, especially, uh, Especially the females. 
Yeah, and then just because it's fun, get yourself a nice shirt and just post your quarantine hair and tag it, so then you can be a commercial for our merch as well. Yeah, and then you can also DM the, the females can DM their shirts to me if you're wearing them. Yeah, because Christie's back open for business. What it is? The economy slowed down, but Christie's DM is open. No, I'm not taking requests. All right, I gotta go. <laughs> bye, everyone. We love you. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.